Okay, good morning. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Municipalities of Saskatchewan's webinar, Run, Win, Lead Toward Parity in Municipal Politics. Thank you for all attending. It's great to have you here today. My name is Lee Finishin, Municipalities of Saskatchewan Central Region Director. I'd like to thank our webinar sponsor, SumaSure. Thanks to SumaSure sponsorship, all municipalities of Saskatchewan webinars are now free to all members. So, to be sure, so be sure to keep an eye out on the municipal update and member emails for future webinar opportunities. You can also help shape the webinar opportunities by staying to the end of today's webinar to fill out a survey. Your feedback helps us make future webinars even better. A link to today's presentation will be sent out to all registrants in the next few days, as well as a PDF of the PowerPoint presentation. Municipalities of Saskatchewan is now using Zoom. You can see all the buttons and icon on the bottom of your screen. Audio settings at the bottom left of your screen. If you're having trouble with audio on your computer, you can use this setting to switch to phone audio. Q&A for questions. Please note you have the choice to send your questions anonymously. Questions can only be viewed by panelists. Chat for comments and conversation. You can send comments to just the panelists or to the panelists and attendees. Please, by all means, tell us where you're from and some of the recent accomplishments of your council in the chat feature. There's also the, the raise the hand feature. It'll be used if we're having any technical difficulties or need a last minute feedback. It's now my presentation to introduce today's presenters. Stephanie Oe has it is an experienced project manager with over 15 years of experience implementing development and research programs that promote gender equality and empower women. A gender equality specialist with a long-standing commitment to sustainable economic development, empowerment, and leadership. Stephanie has extensive experience mainstreaming gender across organizations, enterprises, and projects to ensure equitable outcomes and facilitate inclusive development. She has worked closely with a range of institutions globally, including NGOs, local governments, trade unions, universities, and multilateral institutions. Stephanie is currently experiencing COVID lockdown in Ottawa, trying to relearn grade seven algebra and grade four science while rocking a very bad case of COVID here. Crystal Froze, since elected in 2016, Crystal has represented council on a heritage advisory committee Moose Jaw City Police Commission, South Central Transportation Planning Committee, Tourism Regina, Cultural Diversity Advisory Committee, Moose Jaw Exhibition Company, and the Waccamaw Valley Urban Park Authority. Crystal combines her University of Regina education in public relations and local government authority with 15 years of entrepreneurial experience. Crystal founded a communications management business and her husband, and her husband, and along with her husband Kirby, built Moose Jaw's first cheese manufacturing facility, Coto Hills Creamery. Crystal volunteers on the executive of the business with Moose Jaw and as president of the South Hill Community Association. She's the recipient of the 2019 PRISM Influential Awards. Crystal applies her diverse experience and common sense approach to serve the people of her hometown of Moose Jaw. She's also the co-founder with Mayor Warman Cheryl Spence of the Our Voice, Our Province. On a personal note, I've worked with Stephanie since 2018 on Towards Parity and moderated the session in 2019 SUMA convention. I saw firsthand the passion she puts into her work. Uh, Crystal is an executive on the South Central Transportation Planning Committee that I chair since 2017. Her professionality and attention to detail, along with thoughtful insight, have been in, invaluable to all our efforts. Again, thank you for joining us all today, and without further ado, let's start the presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Lee, for that uh, very kind opening statement. Um, I did go get my hair done, just for you guys, as part of the reopening piece, and my son wanted me to, to show off my Saskatchewan pride. So. I thought that uh, you guys would appreciate uh, a nice little bit of home from, from Ottawa. Um, so with that, I want to thank everyone also for joining us this morning. It's my privilege to share the Toward Parity Framework 
which was posted online on the FCM website, but will also be available as part of this webinar. This is the first webinar showcasing the framework, but more importantly, it's showcasing the framework in action with concrete local examples. The framework is bringing together over 20 years of work by FCM, stakeholders, our members, all who have been collaborating on increasing women's participation in municipal politics. At a time when globally we are facing health crisis, an economic crisis, social justice crisis, in addition to the on ongoing environmental crisis, such an initiative could be dismissed as a nice to have, but not a need to have. However, these crises have exposed inequalities, both on gender and in diversity. From the impacts to recovery, there remain tremendous gaps. More than 1.5 million Canadian women are out of work. Reports are highlighting concerns that women and women-run businesses won't have the same access to stimulus packages and reconstruction. Women were struggling with juggling family responsibilities before the crisis, which has been exasperated by the lockdowns, school closures, and so on. Domestic violence has increased dramatically in Canada and around the world. In April, Statistics Canada stated one in 10 women reported being concerned or very concerned by violence at home during the pandemic. However, despite all this nasty news and despite these, these scary statistics, I hope you'll agree that this crisis has also shown strong examples of women leadership around the world and here in Canada. And has showcased that women are effective leaders. And so this framework for increasing parity in local government the order of government closest to the people is not only timely, but hopefully will be a tool to support you and your communities as you build back, not just to the status quo, but build back better. So that was supposed to be it. Um, so to ensure that everyone has kind of a background on where we are coming from, I want to give an overview. The project is funded by the Department for Women and Gender Equality. Um, and has formerly known as status of women over a 30 month time frame. We might have a short extension due to the realities of COVID, but we are looking at a fall of 2020 wrap up. It's implemented by FCM in partnership with the PTAs um, of which Saskatchewan Municipalities has been an integral partner from the very beginning, Equal Voice and the Canadian Women's Foundation. The project is building on our past projects, the current momentum, both in Canada and internationally, whether it's through the Sustainable Development Goals or through um, domestic initiatives with the feminist government. It's aiming to develop a framework to address some of the systemic barriers to women's participation in municipal politics. Now, how do we do that? In order to ensure that this framework was well based on realities and reflected the proper municipal sector across Canada, we undertook a broad consultation. Saskatchewan representatives were very engaged in the consultation and validation process. And I would encourage people in the chat to put whether or not they were able to be part of the, the Saskatchewan represent, uh, consultations. There was the SUMA convention last year in February, 2019. There were some of the regional meetings. There were some of the online ones as well. And the Saskatchewan representation was very, very strong. So I want to thank anyone who did participate because it helped make sure that uh, this was grounded in reality. You will see that the representation is, is very key and um, examples of FCM membership, um, whether an urban and rural divide, geographical diversity, the French, English, um, unique characteristics. But there was also target interventions to capture the youth of voice, the voice of youth, sorry, um, of non-elected officials to figure out why people might not be stepping forward um, and marginalized groups. So what did those consultations give us? The Toward Parity vision. So the framework is striving for a Canada in which gender parity in municipal government from coast to coast to coast is the new norm recognizing that some communities already have parity, and that's tremendous. But our vision is one where women of all identities, ages, and backgrounds can run for municipal office, they can win their campaigns, and they can lead and thrive within municipal office and as a, a leader that are on issues of importance to their community. 
it is important to note that the issues or the challenges don't just disappear once we get women onto the ballot. That's the first big hurdle. Then they move on to winning their seat and finally addressing the realities of serving as an elected woman. It's also important to note that not all women experience these challenges, but that's not necessarily the norm either. So the intention is to make sure that everyone gets the opportunity to run equally. To use an analogy, we want to make sure that we don't have one person running the 100 meter versus someone running a 200 meter hurdles. The person running the 200 meter hurdles could still win, but it'll be considerably harder. So how do we make sure that everybody is running with the same um, concrete realities? So how do we turn this vision into reality? So this is our, our broad municipal politics framework. We've looked at the challenges and the opportunities, and we do strategically try to look at positive, turning the challenges into opportunities, into four key areas. They do overlap and they are interconnected, and that's why we have this circular, um, almost flower-esque type shape within the center, the opportunities to achieve and retain parity. Because there's one thing to get to parity, but it's a whole other set of challenges to make sure that people are able to stay and want to stay in an environment and continue to contribute to their community. So if we look at these four pillars of intervention, the first starting with improved access to information. This is addressing all the gaps in information that exist from tools, best practices, and knowledge from running a campaign to data gaps and misinformation about your roles as municipal officers. These information gaps exist at all stages, um, whether it's starting to run or in terms of thriving as a municipal councillor. To try and address this as well, the Toward Parity Project will be launching a knowledge hub in September of this year to try and help. The second pillar is enhanced inclusion. So this is addressing a broad number of societal challenges, including, but not limited to the disparities due to race, gender, age, because young people face different challenges, and our seniors who are running for office face different challenges. People's economic status, um, religion, uh, gender, um, and uh, orientation could all be other key factors that would fall into this area. Inclusion theme also tackles key issues as intimidation and harassment, both online and in person, as well as exclusionary norms and processes. During the consultations, I had an opportunity to speak with a Saskatchewan counselor who told a, a story about when she decided to run for municipal office. Um, her family was from Nigeria originally, and when she stepped forward and said, you know, I'm gonna run, her immediate community and network we're like, wow, I didn't realize you were so corrupt. Because in Nigeria, there is this perception and this stereotype that politicians are all corrupt. So in addition to all of those other challenges that go with trying to run a campaign, she had these other stereotypes as an additional hurdle that she had to overcome. But she did, and she persevered. And the fact that she was so candid about her experience in sharing this helps break down those um, experiences and allows us to learn from them. And so I was very grateful for her to share that particular um, anecdote. The third pillar is focusing on increased support. Now these are all the different steps, mechanisms, processes that could be put in place to ensure that women have the support to overcome the challenges and to balance out additional burdens that might exist as a result of their, of their gender. This could include familiar support, this could include your council and mayor agreeing to have you um, bring your baby to council if necessary. This is also access to mentorship, formal and informal, um, programs and workplace accommodations. Mentorship has been a key component throughout all of the activities and through the demonstration projects. And it's something that people, we would encourage people to start with. You have your, your election coming up in this fall. This is a key opportunity for both our, our female and our male um, elected officials to really take proactive steps. During COVID, we're seeing that municipalities are able to move to a virtual online council meeting to protect themselves and to ensure their communities stay safe. There's an opportunity there to see if there's 
opportunities to continue this post COVID that might allow for flexibilities due to health, family responsibilities, or other um, challenges that all counselors, regardless of gender or background, might face. But this could allow for accommodations that would be uh, an interesting step forward. The fourth pillar is improved governance and structures. So these are the policies and structures, both political, financial, and legislative, that impact an individual's ability to serve in their community. But this also incorporates broader relationships with stakeholders that allow for more informed and reflective decision making. Now the Toward Parity Project, one of our uh, components of the project is 20 small demonstration projects, including one that Councillor Froze will be describing shortly. As a criteria of selection for the communities, they had to submit in partnership with a local women's organization. This has helped foster stronger relationships between them and resulted in some incredible creative and impactful collaborations. This requirement that we put in place stemmed from a learning from the Diverse Voices project, which was one of the previous voices projects that led to Toward Parity, that stated that there needed to be stronger collaboration and that this is something also that can start to happen right away. Under this category, we will also hear from Sean um, from Saskatchewan Municipalities, who will be talking about the Saskatchewan Municipalities Harassment Prevention Policy Template. So this is a policy, but it's, it's talking about harassment, which we've already discussed under the inclusion pillar. Again, it's showing that interconnectivity of these different pillars. We don't want things working in silos. We want them to be fluid and being connected, to have that joint initiatives moving forward. So the current context has exposed a number of inequalities. We need to use the crisis as an opportunity to build back better. We need to aim higher than the status quo. We were still well below the 30% threshold. So how can we hit parity? Um, when we were rebuilding the economy, when we're reopening our communities, by ensuring all of our members have the same opportunities that we take into consideration the different realities that people have faced through these crises. This framework was designed to be a roadmap to parity in our local governments, but many of the actions listed can be implemented right away in those rebuilding processes and efforts. By recognizing that not everyone in your community might have been affected in the same way, this framework and these pillars of intervention are a tool that hopefully you can use. We can use this crisis into a catalyst for change. On the site, you'll see that my email is there. I would encourage you to either through the chat box or through the questions and answers, we can explore the, the framework a little bit more. But I also wanted to, because this really is a webinar about the framework in action, I wanted to make sure we had lots of time to hear from local Saskatchewan examples. And so with that, I will hand over to Sean to talk about some of our policy work. Uh, perfect, so hello everyone. Uh, I am Sean Whisker, I'm one of municipalities of Saskatchewan's advocacy advisors. And uh, today I'm gonna to discuss a couple of the ways that you can ensure a safe and positive workplace that's going to encourage parity at your council table. Sorry, let me just get my mouse over here so I can get everything organized. Uh, last year, municipalities of Saskatchewan, in partnership with the Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities and MLT Aikens, developed the Harassment Prevention Policy Template. Because provincial legislation mandates that employers are required to keep their employees safe and ensure that any work-related setting, including your workplace, any conferences you hold, any events that you travel to, and any social events remain harassment free. We've created a policy template which can be found on the municipalities of Saskatchewan's website and it includes clear examples of harassment and guidelines concerning what is and what is not acceptable in the workplace. Temporary or interim measures to allow flexible and immediate solutions to address harassment and alleged harassment. Introducing wording to remove stigmas and encourage a cultural shift in all workplaces. Flexible procedures designed to allow for variation from standard procedures. Privacy considerations in how the local, uh, the local authority freedom of information 
and Protection of Privacy Act applies to handling allegations and investigations in harassment, and an application to members of the public, visitors, and inv individuals conducting businesses with your municipality while attending the municipal workplace. We purposely have made this template customizable so it can meet the specific needs of your municipality. However, for specific considerations, we do encourage that you reach out and get additional legal consultation if needed. If you'd like information on this policy and how it can benefit your municipality, don't hesitate to reach out to me and uh, I'll make sure my email is available in the chat as well as in the, the recording of the webinar. Uh, and my email can also be found on the municipalities of Saskatchewan website. Building on the harassment policy template, municipalities of Saskatchewan recently introduced the Respect in the Workplace, a certification program designed to provide municipalities of all sizes with another tool to prevent bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination in the workplace. This program launched, launched in partnership with the Respect Group Inc. and it covers power dynamics in the workplace, defining, dealing with, and reporting bullying, abuse, harassment, and discrimination, empowering the bystander, managing your emotions as well as the emotions of your coworkers, understanding mental health outcomes due to maltreatment, and your responsibilities as a team member. Taking part in this program is going to offer your municipality substantial benefits such as a stronger corporate culture and reputation, better employee retention and job candidate attraction, on enhanced organizational health, and you may even see a reduction in workplace sick time and absenteeism, as well as an increase in productivity for employees. We also hope that this improves your team communication. It trains and teaches your employees how to comply with the Canadian Labour Code, it increases your employee morale, and it mitigates your legal liabilities. Uh, members who are interested in having their municipality respect certified, can do so at a subsidized cost of $20 per employee or counselor. And more information on this program will also be made available in the recording of the webinar. Uh, and members can certainly contact me or watch our previous webinar done on the RESPECT initiative. Uh, I'm now going to hand it over to Crystal, who is going to talk to you about some local initiatives and how you can implement them in your municipality to bring parity to your council table. Great. Hello, everyone. It is, uh, it's uh, great to be here this morning. And, um, and I'd just like to take a moment and thank uh, Lee and Stephanie and, and uh, Sean and Katie uh, for all their work uh, putting this together. Um, I really appreciate the help and support that they've provided. Um, this, uh, this event that we hosted um, was, in, uh, was in October. And um, so I'm just going to run you through a few slides here that just kind of illustrates the logistics and some of the content and the messages uh, that came from that event. So um, the idea came about, uh, I uh, had the pleasure of meeting Mayor Cheryl Spence, who had, had, uh, has actually really become a mentor for me through this whole process. And from, from meeting her and having a conversation with her um, about parity and the importance of women around the table and her experiences, uh, we came about having this idea to try to have a provincial conversation about what it, um, what, uh, what it's like to be a woman in leadership roles um, and to try to illustrate to other people what this actually all means. Um, so we had an idea, we didn't need, needed funding and a plan. So uh, part of it, of course, because it was a provincial conversation, we wanted to make sure that we had good representation um, from as wide a span as we could in the province. So we were uh, really grateful for the help of Randy uh, Golden uh, from Yorkton City Councilor, Deb Higgins, she's a past mayor here in Moosha and was our first uh, female mayor. Lori Dietz, she's the president of Waccamaw Aboriginal Association. Erin Legg, executive assistant in communications. Uh, Lindsay Brumwell, the chair of Equal Voice Saskatchewan, and Paige Kazama, she was also from Equal Voice. And I should mention here, 
um, that I didn't, how I got connected with Equal Voices, I saw a news story on uh, an event that they host called Daughter of the Vote, which uh, I think plays a really important role in, in visually mentoring women into leadership roles. And this event, if you haven't heard about it, is where a young women from across Canada actually go to the House of Commons and they simulate a seating there and they uh, they choose whichever party and they actually um, go through all of the same procedures which um, which was what the news story was and it was really powerful and that's how I uh, first found out about Equal Voice and connected with them federally in their office and of course with um, Lindsay here in our own province. There we go. Um, so uh, I'm not sure, I can't quite see this whole slide. Um, I'm not sure if that's just the visuals there, Stephanie, but um, uh, so we have our organizing committee that we put together, but um, we also had to have some project management and um, my skill set in my professional life is as a communications director and a professional event manager. So I brought that skill set to the table and I was able to help a lot by putting some framework around things. So we had an idea, we built our committee structure, um, the funding uh, be became an opportunity that um, was really per in perfect timing. Uh, the status of women, uh, federal government, the ministry, actually working with FCM um, brought this funding opportunity around and it uh, we checked all the boxes for it um, so that was that was wonderful uh, to be able to have that um, because of course you know there's going to be expenses and and it just took one less layer of worry off of how we're actually going to produce this event and then a timeline we uh, looked for a date so we began kind of organizing this in April of 2019 with the um, with the deadline and the actual event date being in October, um, not October 19th. So then we just created a timeline and worked back from there. We sought speakers from all over the province as, as much diversity as we could get. We used social media as our key communication, which was Facebook. That's where we uh, launched our announcements from. Um, and we also engaged the media. So closer to the event, we made sure that provincial media knew that the event was coming. I arranged for interviews with um, our, some of our key um, speakers, including um, Cheryl, my co-chair. And then of course, come to the event day. Um, one of my, my priorities in organizing this event was that I wanted it so when we got to the event day, there'd be little to no um, uh, tasks that needed to be done so that uh, our committee, who were also participating, as speakers and on the panel could also participate without having to run around and do a lot of things. So that was kind of a priority to make sure that we had all of kind of the little things uh, accomplished before, before the actual event. So uh, this was our, our Facebook cover um, advertisement of our speakers and, and, uh, and we had kind of banged out a little bit of the topics. We didn't actually have the full agenda kind of set for the day, but we knew we, we wanted to talk about the history of women in our province. We wanted to talk about the challenge and barriers in real life scenarios and the impact that we have as elected women in our positions currently and in leadership roles in our province. And then Equal Voice uh, was going to um, uh, present on how to run a campaign. And then we wanted to kind of close talking about leading like a woman with you know, a really busy lifestyle, balancing family and life um, and the challenges around that. So um, this was our agenda for the day and um, the committee worked really hard to identify topics uh, for the speakers. Um, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we had um, kind of a, a vast array of, of topics that would be really engaging. And as I said, our committee and our speakers were, were part of the whole, the whole event. Um, we put the Q&A panel at the beginning of the, um, uh, in, the, in the earlier part of the day, and I'll, I'll touch a little bit about why 
why that kind of came about. Um, but that was what our agenda looked like for October the 19th. We hosted it in the, um, oh, back up one more there, Stephanie. Thank you. Um, uh, I just wanted to highlight our beautiful uh, library, Musha Public Library and, and Art Gallery and Museum. This is where we, are, we hosted it. We, we were able to partner with them. Um, I just did, would like to invite anybody who ever comes to Musha to make sure you take some time out to actually go into our library next to the Legislative Assembly in Regina. Uh, our library has the most marble in all of the buildings in the province. So I just wanted to highlight that because it, it's, a, it's a landmark here in our city and it was great to be able to host it on site in that venue. So um, the, the way we had online registration was in partnership with Equal Voice. They were able to host our online registration. Um, as well as the funding that we received through FCM, they actually held in their own account. So that was one of the details we didn't have to worry about, which was a, a great relief for our committee because we were working on a relatively short timeline. So trying to set up those logistics um, was something we didn't have to worry about. Um, so this particular event, it, uh, we started off with kind of grandiose ideas, hoping that we would have um, hundreds of people kind of come. We actually originally had it set up in the theater. Um, and as our registration started to come in, we started to kind of recognize that, um, and we were, make, we were trying to make it barrier free. So we had childcare uh, was going to be an option. We were providing lunch. We did charge a $10 fee and we did that. The consensus around the table was at that amount, then that was kind of decided earlier in the organizing uh, before we knew we had funding was just to cover lunch and to ensure that you know, the people that were coming would be committed by just putting in the $10. If, uh, if we had any issues, and this is also discussed, if somebody had some, um, needed, uh, needed some help and, and couldn't afford that, then we would make that happen. That was also a topic. So I would just really wanna emphasize here that it's not the number of people that attend this event. This is a really, spe this is really specific area uh, and topic. So the, the people who are attending this already have, uh, they're, they're engaged in some aspect of questioning or wondering what, uh, what is with this topic and, and are interested in this issue. So um, if you had, like we had relatively around 30 or so people um, that attended, you know that the conversations and the impact that the content is gonna have is actually gonna have a rippling effect, sort of a, a six degrees of connection. They're going to take the information and um, the knowledge and the mentoring that happened throughout this event with them into their own circles and and hopefully it will uh, change minds and have an impact and encourage them in their own journeys and um, and paths to leadership so don't get wrapped up so much in the numbers just really focus on the content and the quality of the of the attendance that's uh, the people that are coming that are actually coming to be engaged So we bravely uh, did the entire event live on Facebook. And we did this because this was a provincial conversation. So we really wanted to make it as, as accessible as possible in all four corners of our province. So we set up um, uh, the ability to just go live. So all, the entire day was, was live, including the lunch, lunchtime speaker. The only thing I would recommend now that we are actually even more knowledgeable about how to communicate digitally is to ensure that you have really good audio. We we didn't um, we didn't have quite have the knowledge around the technology about that, so the the audio isn't as good as it as it could be now that we know how that kind of all works. That we're living in the world of Zoom and and Facebook and and everything else like that. So make sure if you're going to do an event and want to do it live or record it that um, it takes some time out to seek out some help with how to make the audio the best it can. So one of the reasons we wanted to have the Q&A panel in the morning was that 
wanted to have an atmosphere of um, uh, uh, to, that would build a really strong connection with the attendees and to kind of dive a little deeper a little later in the day with some of the experiences. So these questions, these are just some of them, these aren't all of them. Um, these questions were put together by our, by our organizing committee and, and also speaking with our, our, our speakers that were coming. And, um, and so these questions were asked by our MC, which was Tegan Whitco. She actually is a program director here with our radio stations here at Golden West Radio. And she asked these questions and went down the, the, the uh, panelists who were a mixture of our speakers and our committee. And these are some of the answers that came out of some of those questions, which I think are really telling. And were, it was a really good real life um, experience that they were sharing in, um, in, their, in their path and, and what they're experiencing as leaders. And I just wanted to highlight a couple of them. Um, the barriers and challenges that, that some of our, our panelists have, have experienced was, um, you know, could be internal, like just even generally trusting yourself that you have the experience and the knowledge to fulfill this role that you've just taken on. But also some of the external experiences of, um, uh, of being uh, mistaken as not even an elected official in the room, um, of uh, being passed over for introductions um, and, and having that, or um, uh, even right to the very, a uh, bit of racism and and uh, dealing with colonialism in in views of uh, women's roles um, and also not getting elected and to be encouraged to keep trying in the in the barriers and challenges which I think is all elected officials can can uh, relate to that um, and then what inspired them I think that shows a real common thread as well from all of us around the table no matter what gender you are is um, what inspired you. Usually it's a, an issue that you want to change in your community and or someone's inspired you or tapped you on the shoulder. I think the difference uh, for that is, is that um, seeing role models uh, for younger women to see more women in those roles um, helps, helps to see themselves in the future doing that. And support systems, of course, are so important. Um, it, uh, it can be a, a fairly lonely position being elected official sometimes, so it's really important. We talked a lot about um, how to support one another and where they do, do their support from. And finding balance probably was a very large, uh, probably took up a fairly large chunk of the, of the Q&A panel. Um, trying to balance um, everything from farming to motherhood um, and being employed as well. Uh, taking time out for yourself, trying to stop um, and delegate out to things and not feeling guilty and trying to carry all of those things on, on your shoulders at once. So the Q&A panel was really, really very informative and I think um, just kind of broke the ice for the day and really was going to set the tone for the way the rest of the afternoon was going to be. So the lunchtime uh, speaker that we had, Robin Cunningham, she is a, an entrepreneur. She used to own the yoga loft here in Moose Jaw, but um, she's also now a life coach and she's a young mom and she balances lots of things on the go. So she, her experience and knowledge that she brought at the lunchtime uh, talk was, was really wonderful and really um, just emphasized the whole part of trying to find the balance and calm and uh and approaching things from that manner so um i think we have to kind of walk the talk too and so it's really important to include these types of talk topics when we're talking about leadership roles and experiencing what this is like is it uh it, looking after yourself and um and that is a really key component to being a really good leader so i just wanted to use this uh, photo uh, that was taken just to sort of give you the idea of kind of what the tone was like in the afternoon um, Because we had the Q&A a little earlier and as I said, it was like an icebreaker What happened in the afternoon is really quite remarkable um, in my my uh, Impression of it was that it almost became like a, a mini minute mentoring um, workshop in a way um, there was just so much uh, camaraderie and stories uh, that were shared and encouragement that came out of out of this and it's really well illustrated in the expressions of, of the panelists uh, of our speakers here 
it, as, uh, as Randy Golden is sharing one of her stories. So I just wanted to use that as just kind of give you an idea of what the tone was like in the afternoon. So these are the messages from the speaker. So this is when we went into the afternoon with a bit more of a, of a deep dive. And so our, our, our topics in the afternoon were spurring action, building confidence, um, the impact we have making and uh, making the connection on why we do what we do. And of course, then Equal Voice also did um, uh, how to run a campaign and a kind of a brief kind of component of that. And then we wrapped up on how to lead like a woman. So these were some of the, the actual um, quotes from women uh, that presented in the afternoon. And it's, it, there's quite a gambit there, but it really is real life experiences that, that were shared that um, brought on broader conversations. Um, you know, women look at things differently, not better, not worse, but differently. And it's an important difference. And I think that was one of the key phrases that came out of the conversations uh, that happened in the afternoon, um, as well as, you know, we need a greater understanding of what the role requires. I think a lot of people who might throw their hat, their name in the hat for election, um, might not have really any really solid idea of what it actually is like after election day is over and then you have to roll up your sleeves and get to work so there was a lot of information that was provided around those um, and also i think uh, one of the other key themes that happened in the afternoon was that confident confident decisions come from diverse input and we need to have a diverse uh, a diverse representation around the table in order for us as elected officials to have the most informed information in order to make the decisions that best represent everyone whom we serve. And that was really a, an interesting thread that kind of came out of the whole afternoon. Um, there, there's the whole balance of, of being true to yourself and and trying to overcome some of the barriers was definitely uh, in there as well. But I think those, those two very important components about having uh, representation and being well-informed in order for us to make the decisions we need to make uh, was kind of the, the lasting impression from that, that point. And it was, um, it was wonderful to see uh, by the end of the afternoon uh, that there was a real connection between our panelists and committee and the attendees and the mentoring that happened and the conversations that happened after, the, after everything was all wrapped up and the connections that were made there. Um, I know uh, connecting with other, other people that are in elected roles because is, as we know, sometimes it's hard to, to explain this to people and, until you've actually experienced it. But um, you know, being a person who's who's in an elected role, who's um, really twenty four seven, is uh, to be accessible by their by the those that they serve, is is kind of an interesting thing to try to explain to people who haven't been in that role. My husband often jokes, you know, if if I zip out to the grocery store to get milk, um, sometimes I can be gone an hour, and I know we've all know kind of what that is like you get caught in the grocery store by a concerned citizen and, you, and you're there for an hour. Um, so uh, I think being able to not only have our panelists and our speakers connect um, in their roles as elected and leaders in our, in our province, but also to communicate a lot of those things and try to demystify things um, about being an elected person and getting elected. Equal Voice did a great job of expressing um, I, um, how to run a campaign and what that can look like in that framework. And of course, this event wouldn't happen without the support of Equal Voice and FCM, and the, the Ministry of the Status of Women, and our, our, uh, our library, the location, the Museum and Art Gallery, and RBC actually came on board as a sponsor for the lunch, which was uh, really generous of them to do. So we had a great connection, great response, and uh, we had money left over from the funds um, that, we, that we received. So um, our committee talked about doing a second event and we were uh, getting ready and we we're really, really excited about it. We had the venue booked um, and everything and uh, yes, then COVID happened. 
and, uh, and it's been postponed. And uh, we are looking to, as you know, uh, we're keeping a very close eye on everything here in our province. Um, we don't, you know, health, health is the most important. Uh, so we don't want to jeopardize that. So we're, we're just following along with everything else that Saskatchewan Health Authority is advising. We're hoping to do something in the fall and our committee is going to be having a conversation about what that might look like. Um, it will be live, it will be recorded again because it's a conversation I think that um, has a rippling effect so that will definitely be a priority in that and um, I just want to finish up with uh, with two last little slides here um, the you know we talk a lot about the whys of all this and and uh, you know, why is it so important to have women in leadership roles and elected positions in seats around the decision making table and um, uh, I just wanted to bring everyone's attention to this, uh, the women, the Women's Entrepreneurial, Entrepreneurial Association of Saskatchewan did this study back in May and I believe it was done actually in partnership with the status of women here in, in uh, Saskatchewan. And uh, some really interesting stats came out of that, and this is one of them. And here in Saskatchewan, women-led businesses tend to lean more towards finance, administration, educational services, healthcare, social assistance, arts, entertainment, recreation, food, accommodation services, um, national security. Um, and the contribution of women-led businesses in the Saskatchewan economy in 2019 contributed $23.1 billion in the, into the GDP and almost 200,000 jobs, employees. Um, that's really significant. And I think as an elected person, we need to understand that uh, this voice is important because it influences and it plays a very key role to the health in, especially in the economy of our province. So I, I wanted to bring that up and also diversity and inclusion and belonging is really important. It's, it's great to get a seat at the table, but there needs to be respect for the people at that table. We need to include people around, but we also need to hear the voices around that table, which I think um, was really well represented in Stephanie's Stephanie's presentation about the importance of, uh, of having all of those three together, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. And lastly, I just want to finish with, um, with a Maya Angelou quote, in diversity, there's beauty and there is strength. And I share my, my role uh, with all of my colleagues here that, are, that have taken their time out today to uh, tune into this. Um, we just want to do the best we can for our community. Um, and when I make a decision at my council table, I want to be the most informed. And sometimes that means listening to opposite um, opinions. I might not agree with them, but I want to be informed about that or perspective that is not anywhere in my own experiences. I want to hear someone else's experience. Those, those, those voices are so important for myself to have the most informed amount of information to make the best decision for everyone in my community. And that is why I think this is such an important issue. Um, this event was, was great. It was fun to, uh, to uh, put together. Um, I made lifelong friends from this. And, um, and I think uh, we opened up a conversation in our province that we need and I really encourage you all to try to host something similar like this in your own community to to have a, a coffee conversation to bring this bring this back into your communities and um, and let's try to make a difference and, and share and and share and ask for the information and, and respect the voices of all the diverse uh, opinions we have around the table and uh, thank you once again for inviting me to share this. Uh, it's been a real privilege and, and, um, and I will turn this back over to Lee. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Crystal, uh, for, uh, for the presentation and Stephanie as well for her great presentation.
Uh, I'm just checking right now and I see that we have one question right off the bat. And that question is, do the panelists have any suggestions or ideas on how to engage younger women to take the leap and run for council? I have found being on council has been one of the most, the best learning experiences I have been involved in and would love to figure out a way to get younger women to become a part of their community. Would sure. like well, did you want to start with that? I mean, you're actually living the trenches. I, I, I can add some comments afterwards. Sure, you bet. Um, you know, we are all, that is a topic conversation uh, about trying to engage youth in general in how to get them to, um, to think of themselves in these roles. And, you know, we, we often think that there's this huge gap of huge difference, you know, but when you think of ourselves when we were in our 20s and that, like, what were we doing, you know, there's only a few people uh, that might have thought of themselves in a leadership role. But our city has a youth advisory committee um, that uh, meets, uh, the mayor is actually um, our advisory uh, uh, person on there, and they meet once a month and it is a mixture of, of young men and young women from the high schools in our city and they hit topics of all kinds. Uh, and that is, I think that is one way, is to bring, bring um, the youth in that are actually interested in that. Um, taking barriers away to allow young moms to come into you know, events like this, which is why we, we offered uh, childcare, and touching on topics that is relevant to their generation. You know, 10, 10 years has changed a lot here. Well, honestly, in the past couple of months, uh, since we've hit COVID, COVID has really changed uh, how we are working and leading in our province. So I think we need to stay relative. And if we're trying to hit a demographic like that, we need to speak to them about the issues that they have and allow them to have that voice. But it is always a topic conversation of how to, to engage youth. And I don't think anybody has the, has the perfect magic wand uh, in that. I think if there's an issue, they, they come out for it so um i think that that's a, a very complete answer crystal i'll just give a couple of examples of some of the other demonstration projects similar to the one that you just did a fabulous job of explaining um and how they've been trying to address some of the youth um factors um i'll, I'll take the example from the naimo bc um and they've they've set up um a mentor mentee kind of ongoing relationship piece and they they had a specific um, mentee campaign to go and find young people in their community and they were using a lot of the different social media pieces going through the high schools going through the community colleges and, and some of those pieces to identify some of those people and i think that like older women we often need to be asked more than once and so they they had a very proactive campaign to try and attract those people so that was an interesting example mm -hmm. Um, if we go to the far other side, in um, Pount Pearl, uh, Newfoundland, they partnered with the YWCA, and actually Hamilton did as well. In the YWCA had actually um, women's leadership, youth leadership um, activities and programs already there. And they went and specifically worked with those people who are already trying to take on a leadership element but maybe aren't thinking about politics and thinking about how they can make a difference so those are kind of three different examples um, from your peers um, because i think that's where you're going to learn from best there, there's a few other examples as well but um, i think those are the, some of the really strong examples that have come from those demonstration projects um, that could be replicated there's also uh, northern bc uh, prince george um, they're doing a, a series of profiles um, of, of women leaders from across the region um, and recognizing that, you know, if you see it, you can become it. Um, and so sometimes it's also highlighting, like, Crystal, you were talking about that youth council. Well, maybe there's other youth who don't actually know that exists, but profiling them, giving them that recognition um, and, and putting it on platforms that are, are obviously responsive to, to that age demographic um, re requires knowledge that I don't have, but um, it, you know, it can tap into some of those different mechanisms as ways of attracting them. So those might be some ideas um, to complement Crystal's 
thoughts. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I had an interesting question one time uh, from somebody who, who asked me, why, why would I try to encourage other people to run for election? That, isn't that co seen as competition? Uh, uh, and I said, you know, um, uh, and, and maybe, maybe it is, but I don't really view it that way. I, I think how I view it is that complacency, I think, is, is, um, is kind of more the, the, the death of, of uh, democracy. And so to not actively be help, trying to get um, people, particularly women, and I have, I have seven nieces and that, that um, I'm looking to be a role model for. So to try to remove some of those barriers and be a good role model for them. Um, we had a, a by-election here in Moose Jaw and um, I was approached actually by a couple of women. So I really, um, uh, I went out for coffee with them and I conveyed to them um, kind of the role and what it looked like and encouraged them, encouraged them to run. And that, um, I think that's, uh, I guess I'm just more looking at, at the bigger picture of things, you know, the voters decide ultimately, so. Excellent. I would encourage anybody else to uh, put their question in really quick and uh, see if we can get another one answered before we wrap up. Perfect. I'll, uh, I'll just hop in here with a, a quick one that I was thinking about. So obviously we're in the age of COVID and everyone is uh, at home. Um, so what are some kind of ways that we can uh, engage people and engage women to get interested in running, seeing as uh, November is not that far away and we do have our municipal elections coming up. So uh, any thoughts on that? Well, as you say, you know, we're, we're constantly online. Um, in some ways, that's, that's helped a lot because we've been able to do connections uh, like this one that we might not otherwise have had that opportunity. Um, the chance of me being able to, to meet with all of you individually would be would very low. So I'm, I'm grateful for this sort of opportunity. So it's to look at, you know, how can we use some of this uh, greater familiarity with um, online networking and 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 I think the need for connections in this time of, of physical distancing is almost even more required um, and I think that that profiling of, of powerful um, and engaging women um, like many of the ones that were were in crystal's presentation you know, you, you have these amazing leaders from a pro around the province um, who are able to to showcase and lead the way um, and and who want to further attract more people into into this space. Um, it, it's tough because, you know, connections and uh, campaigning as, as many of the councillors would and the mayors will attest is, is very much a connection and a, and a personal interaction. So trying to find an, a, an effective way um, to move forward is, is gonna require a lot of creativity. Um, and, and maybe from that creativity will also um, sprung a whole bunch of new ideas and ways that we can, can better uh, reach out to one another and support one another um, and, and get past all of these, these current crises and, and build back to something that everyone is, is feeling mm -hmm. comfortable with. I don't yeah, know, Crystal, do you have other ideas? Well, we know door knocking is going to look a whole lot different uh, <laughs> this election. Um, so trying to connect with our voters is is going to be a bit of a challenge. And I know Equal Voice has done a really good job with their with their uh, online um, webinars about uh, how to run your own campaign. But um, you know, it really is if if we're not um, if we're not engaging in the social aspect on using utilizing social media. And understanding that um, it's going to be very difficult to reach out to the community um, to to encourage them to to vote. Um, so it is it's a it's we're absolutely living an interesting time, and I think we're kind of writing the playbook here as we go along. Um, but luckily for us, if we're trying to engage younger women, most of them are online. So uh, <laughs> so so we're halfway there. If you know how to use Facebook, Instagram, and any any others. I just found out about TikTok and I've been watching that and that's a whole other can yeah. of work. So, uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, so, you know, it's, uh, we are, it, we're just, we're living in a time where I think we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to look back 
hopefully 10 years from now and and uh go wow i can't believe we accomplished what we did in this difficult situation but um but yeah i guess Perfect. i might throw that back out to the members as well and the participants in terms of you know if if they were trying to reach out what what kind of supports would they want from from fcm i might not have the solutions Ooh. i might not have the answers um but if there there is I mean, there's a lot of webinars that are out there these days. I'm, you know, lots of things cross my desk. Um, and, you know, I imagine at, at Saskatchewan municipalities, there's also um, possibilities. Um, so if you have an idea or a question, uh, Sean was very good about sharing his uh, email and my email was also in the chat box mm -hmm. and in the presentation. You could always, you know, send me a note. I might not have the answer, but I'll try and find it. Yeah, and for everyone out there, we're looking to host something in the fall. So stay tuned. Go like us on Facebook, our Voice Our Province Empowering Sask Women. We have a Facebook page. So invite everyone uh, to, uh, to connect with us that way as well. Excellent. I uh, appreciate uh, uh, both of your ladies' presentations and uh, your time today. Uh, that brings us to the end of our webinar today. Uh, thank you for the questions. To reiterate, we will be providing this presentation to all registrants in the next few days, as well as a PDF of today's PowerPoint presentation. As well, uh, I would uh, encourage everyone to fill out a short survey uh, so we may be able to improve your webinar experience. Please watch for upcoming webinars in the update. And thank you to everyone who attended today. Have a great day, all. Thank Thanks, everybody. You. Thank you very much. Thank I'll you just for do a, a quick plug here. We do have a webinar next Tuesday uh, with environmental stakeholders. So if anyone is interested, uh, that will be included on the link for the webinar recording. Uh, but you can also find that in uh, Municipal Update. Thank you, Sean. Have a good day, all. Bye-bye.